Hey YouTube, just an update on my uh, printer situation this weekend. Uh, as you can see, I've installed a BL, actually it's the CR Touch, it's the Creality version essentially of the BL Touch on my uh, Ender 2 Pro. Uh, I'm not going to go over like a deep dive on the installation, but what I will go over is really probably the most important part of the installation process, and it's not the physical. The physical was very easy. You know, print print an acceptable mount that you want to use um, to mount it to the side of the uh, the shroud here. The actual hot end bracket in the back already has uh, provisions in it for uh, for two bolts, which come with the CR Touch kit anyways. So it's obviously it's like a generic mount. They must use it for other printers as well. It's just the shroud happens to cover those holes. Once you get it mounted, you run the you run the cable all the way along the main line, like I have it here, down into the printer. The printer has a um, it, it already. This is a 32 bit. It's a 4.2.3 main board, I believe, and the printer uh, already has a, uh, a BL Touch CR Touch uh, header on it. That's the easy part, because once you take the bottom off, plug it in, route it up, you know, zip tie it or tie it off and get it, you know, relatively normal. It's getting it working that's actually 99% of the work. Um, and there isn't really a lot of information out there on the specifics, and if you're new to 3D printing like I am, and I'm not new to Linux, but I'm new to this version of Linux, the Pi OS, and how it, how it does things. Um, so what you want to do is... You, you need to make sure that you configure it properly. Now what I did was I kind of cheated a little bit. I went and looked at the config file on the Ender 2 Pro, I mean the Ender 3 S1 Pro, because this one already kind of pre-configured a lot of it because it, it came with the CR Touch. So I kind of mimicked those settings with the exception of the really, really important ones, which are, let me bring it up here. Sorry, I'm redoing a camera uh, a mount for the screen. I just got another uh, screen. This one's an IPS, so I can actually see it, and it's not washed out, and the viewing angles are actually normal. But there were problems with the touch, the touch uh, calibrations after I rotated it, and I just didn't feel like fighting it anymore. I'd spent all night long trying to figure out how to fix the calibration, and there's just there's just too many issues behind it, and too much data on the internet, and that's, a lot of it's old. So I'm just going to leave it in the horizontal mode, but I'm putting out a new bracket. Um, but I had to move the, the mounts to that end so I can turn it. So, anyways, I got off topic. So, let's see here. Alright, so the big settings you need are all in your printer config. The first one you're going to need to make sure is that your you disable your end stops for stepper stepper Z. So you see the ones that I've commented out. You're also going to want to add that line there and stop pin probe virtual Z and stop there or Z virtual and stop there. Uh, that's what tells it uh, what end stop you're using as opposed to using the Pro. And you're going to need to change the step pin and uh, the third pin there <coughs> to those settings. If they're not already there. But I think I'm pretty... Oh, sorry, wrong one. I'm pretty sure on this one all I did was I disabled the two end stops and I put that line in. Then you have to go down to the BL touch section. And you're going to comment out the two original pins because those are for those are not for this printer. Those are for those are actually the ones for the uh, S1 Pro. That the sensor and control pin below are the ones for the uh, S2 Pro. 
you need those or else the, the sensor won't activate and work. And then you want to make sure you have your offsets in there. And the rest of the stuff just kind of added itself on its own. But if you want to copy that, you can copy it. But the offsets, you're going to want to definitely check those on your own. I think they will populate once you do an auto home on Z anyways. So, and then put in a safe Z home option in there. And that's half the size of the bed. That's what, so when it does home, the probe, the probe just goes to the middle of the bed. And then under bed mesh, those are the values I'm using. They, they shouldn't be too far off from what you're using. The mesh uh, max, you won't be able to set those until you set X and Y to a higher value to allow the extruder to go all the way to the end without hitting the uh, tensioner on this side and without hitting the front here. So you can get those numbers by just doing a manual move here and stop it in the safe area and then write those numbers down. And in my particular case, uh, for X and Y, uh, position max ended up being 175 on the X axis, which keeps it about two millimeters from the tensioner and why the max I came out with was about 167. Once you set those down here under bed mesh, you can set mesh max to 135, 135 and mesh minimum to 30, 20. Now what those numbers mean is the mesh minimum is 30 millimeters in, 20 millimeters, 30 millimeters on the X axis, 20 millimeters on the Y. That puts it in just about on top of that screw. And then you set the number of passes it's going to do. I set mine to 4 and 4 for the for the mesh. So it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. When it gets to the last zigzag, the last two numbers are the max. And that's where you get, that's where I'm getting the 135, 135. So that's where it's going to end. And you can change the probe count to whatever you think it is. I think 3 was fine, but I wanted to see exactly how how badly this, this level was. So I'm doing it at four and it's fine. Um, and then once you add all these in here and you test your homing, you'll get new menus in your in your uh, flipper screen. So you go to settings, uh, tap it. And then Oh, wrong one. Sorry. Uh, where are we? I might not be able to show them while it's running a print. Anyways, in here you would end up getting bed mesh, bed leveling options as well. Uh, I think when the print finishes, they'll show up. Actually, I can show you on the S1 Pro what you'll see. Because these are menus that won't load until you put those items in your your printer config. So we go to so you end up getting bed level and bed mesh, along with your Z calibrate options. And uh, this is where you will go to view either your existing mesh, provided it's not too terrible. And this one's not. I got to work on my bed a little bit on this one. Um, or you can set calibrate and it'll go through its profile and it does the exact same now on here as it does on this system So when you hit uh, calibrate It'll home first And this is very similar to the to the options you would have had in the original uh, firm firmware for the s1 pro And uh, I can't run it now, but it does work on it does work fine on the on the s2 I should have probably waited to run that, but. And you've seen this, you've probably seen this in a million videos online. But that's essentially what it's gonna end up doing. And it's pretty quick. It's much quicker in this firmware than it is in the in the Marlin firmware. So I believe on this particular one I'm doing a 25 point mesh. Five and five.
and then you hit continue, it'll save the settings, it'll reboot Clipper. And then when you go back to configuration, bed mesh, you can view if there were any changes. And I didn't make any changes, obviously. And I would suggest doing this when it's warmed up as well. Uh, another thing you will end up getting, uh, which I do not have in here, but I do have in my config here, is, uh, let's see here. Uh, I added this, line, this section here, bed scores. And those were the values that I came up, um, those are the values that are above all four screws going from the front left, uh, front right, right rear, right uh, left rear, and those are the values. Once you put those in there, you'll get another option in your menu, uh, which I don't have here, but it'll show up here, and it'll say um, something like, like bed screws or configure screws. Hold on, let me pull it up here. I know there's an option in the menu here that pops up once you get that under tool head. Is it under tool head? Yeah, it should be under tool head. And it won't, well, probably because it's printing, but when it when you click here it says bed screws and it'll walk you through doing your, your screw um, calibrations manually. You do your paper thing and it will ask you to do the first one and then you hit um, accept and type in accept on the screen and it will bring you to the next one and then if you made a change you'll type um, adjusted I believe and then it will send to the next one you type adjusted next one adjusted when you get back to this one if it's if it needs adjusting which you most likely will and you just keep going around and around and around until the paper is right on each corner when they're right and hit accept when you get to the last one that clears accept it will save that configuration and, uh, and you know your bed's, your bed's done. So you pretty much have a pretty good idea without having to guess how many times you're going to have to do the manual leveling before you get it just right. Because it'll walk you through it. As opposed to just kind of feeling, you know, whatever. <coughs> it's just kind of a visual way of, of doing it, I think. When uh, this thing is done printing and I redo my mounts, I will uh, do another video just specifically on the additional menus that will pop up with these configurations. But I'm going to go back to it so you can see them again because these are really important. I couldn't find this information anywhere. And the information that I did find was basically a bunch of everybody just kind of giving you, you know, their, their opinions based on, I think a lot of these were on different versions too. So again, you want to add the bed screw section to assist with your manual bed leveling. You're going to want to, in the BL touch section, which I I'm cut, I cut and paste this in here, the whole section from my other printer. And I commented out the top too, and I put in the correct sensor pin information. And then um, check your offsets. And this one here, don't be concerned about the Z offset 2.0 that gets commented out. That's commented out because when it does the bed probing, it'll then write that data down here below this config line that you shouldn't touch because this is all generated and it'll give you the new end stop numbers and new offsets and all that so don't touch any of this this is all the bed leveling and bed mesh so anything that gets manually um, commented out here that you didn't comment out was done by the system just ignore it um, don't get concerned I was originally concerned about it why wasn't it saving I didn't realize it was saving it down below sit your Z safe auto home and then set your bed mesh section. Once you do that, you'll get all the new menus in here and everything should work right. If you do not put in um, these two values again, sensor pin and control pin, if you don't put those two specific values, then the uh, sensor won't work. It won't, even, it won't even move or anything. The light will stay red. It'll just have power and that's it. And once you see the light go purple after you boot up, and it goes through the home, it, it should start working as long as you get those pins set right. So that's uh, basically what I got for you guys today. I tried to make it as short as I could. If you have any questions, go ahead and post it uh, below in the comments and I'll uh, try to get back to you. Bye.